grace and mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We consider ultimately all of our readings together this morning. Let me share with you a verse from both the Gospel and from Ecclesiastes. The rich man said, Soul, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your soul will be demanded from you. And then from Ecclesiastes, There is nothing better for a man than to eat and to drink, and to find joy in his work. This too, I saw, is from God's hand. So which is it? Is it bad to eat, drink, and be merry? Or is it good to eat, drink, and be merry? Can't God make up his mind? Does God contradict himself? Are you sure we can trust the writers of the Bible? Well, yes, we can trust the writers of the Bible. No, God does not contradict himself. And yes, God has made up his mind. The answer to the paradox is found right in those verses surrounding these ones I just quoted. Solomon says, For who can eat or enjoy himself apart from God? Yes, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness to the man whom he considers good. And Jesus tells us the rich fool prefaced his drinking and eating with the foolish exhortation to himself, Soul, take thine ease. Soul, take it easy. There is a way for those on the road to heaven to eat, drink, and be merry. And there is a way to eat, drink, and be merry that leads straight to hell. Let's consider the words of Ecclesiastes, the churchman, and the words of Jesus, the founder, head, and cornerstone of the church, and learn how to do it right. Solomon never names himself as the author of this book. He simply calls himself Ecclesiastes, the church guy often translated as the preacher. But according to tradition, Solomon wrote these words after a long life of first wisdom and then foolishness. Solomon inherited a good kingdom from his father David, and he wasn't one of those spoiled lazy heirs. Solomon worked hard to make the kingdom of Israel even better, bigger, stronger, and more beautiful. The most famous work of Solomon, of course, is building the first temple, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. When Solomon began his rule, God told Solomon, ask me for anything as a blessing. And Solomon chose to ask that God would give him wisdom. God blessed that request, that choice in spades. Even the Queen of Sheba came with her whole retinue to Israel, she said, to find out if all of the outrageous rumors about Solomon's wisdom and Israel's riches were true. And then she actually says, those rumors were nothing compared to the real thing. But then over time, Solomon began to get more and more full of himself. And he himself is the guy who wrote in Proverbs, Pride goeth before the fall. In many respects, Solomon remained wise, at least in earthly matters, Yet he thought he was a lot wiser than he was. And he acted as though his wisdom were not a gracious gift from God, which the Lord could just as easily 
take away again or confound. Remember how God did that to Nebuchadnezzar and made him eat grass in the fields for seven years after he bragged too much? Solomon was flattered by his many foreign wives, a number of whom he married to cement alliances with other countries. And of course, he wanted to keep all his wives happy, so he built chapels and temples for their gods on the hillsides around Jerusalem. And then, of course, to keep them happy, he went to church with them, and Solomon hedged his bets on believing in the true God and To put it in modern language, he really ticked God off. And it all started at that point with arrogance. I'm so great. I've made Israel great. I'm so wise. Does that sound familiar? Are any of you familiar with politicians where reporters count the number of times they say I? in their speeches. Does that sound familiar? But ordinary people do the same thing. The rich fool did the same thing. And of course, we're tempted to do the same thing. The rich man bragged as though he'd made himself rich. He'd done all this stuff for himself. He'd given himself a nice, secure future. And just like that, and because of that, he was six feet under. And he took nothing with him. What an act of kindness and mercy and grace that God led Solomon back to his senses before it was too late. God graciously allowed age, setbacks, disappointments to grind down Solomon's pride to the point where he finally returned to God as an elderly man and once again regained the wisdom that God alone gives through faith. Do you remember it was also Solomon who had written in the Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. How would you like to be famous for being the guy who wrote that and then the guy who forgot it? And so now in Ecclesiastes, he writes after his life has gone full circle from wise and humble king to prideful unbeliever to humbled and even wiser old man. As an elderly believer, finally, Solomon truly gets what it means that you can't take it with you. In fact, Solomon takes that insight one step further in Ecclesiastes. Not only can't you take it with you, you have no control over what happens to the inheritance that you leave behind, whether it's used foolishly or wisely. In the case of Solomon, it was used foolishly. His son Rehoboam, before he even took office, lost half the kingdom the ten northern tribes of Israel. Every single thing we have, every single thing we accomplish, it is all a blessing from God alone. And therefore we must learn to say with Job, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The rich fool in today's gospel lesson is not the exception to the rule. Rather, he's a good example of the way most people think about earthly possessions. God pours out his blessings on everybody. Believer and unbeliever alike, he gave rich harvests to this man. But the rich man never acknowledged they were a gift 
of God. Instead, he thought that he had made himself secure and at ease. He trusted in himself, his own deeds, his own abilities. He gave himself a sense of peace, but oh, what misplaced trust and what a false peace. After he said to his soul, soul, take thine ease, he had peace and security for, I don't know, make your own guess, three hours, maybe six. Wow, that's good. Jesus told this story after two guys came to him and said, teacher, you need to tell my brother to share dad's inheritance with me. I want some of the money too. And they did this in the middle of Jesus preaching a sermon. Jesus was not happy. He was disgusted. He answers, man, who appointed me to be a judge or an arbitrator over you? Then he said to them, watch out and be on guard against all greed because a man's life is not measured by how many possessions he has. 25 years ago when I lived in Michigan, they have more boats per capita than any other state. And if you traveled up the coasts, there were a lot of people with those boats and with uh, cottages and things. And there was a popular bumper sticker people had on their cars, he who finishes with the most toys wins. People were actually proud to put that foolishness on their car. Watch out and be on guard against all greed. Jesus says, because a man's life is not measured by how many possessions he has. And Jesus wasn't just talking to rich people. We all need to be warned about the insidious acid of greed. Yes, work. Work hard. Be wise with your money. But then let God bless you as he will. Worshiping the almighty dollar is idolatry. The dollar can't help you. Only God can. If we worship the dollar, then, like Solomon, we're asking God to teach us a lesson the hard way. Much better to learn it the right way by listening to his word. Solomon reminds us that if we rely on ourselves, our hard work, our savings, we can't have peace. For what does a man gain through all his hard work, through all the turmoil in his heart as he works so hard under the sun? Pain fills his days. His occupation is frustration. Even at heart, at night, his heart is not at rest. This too is vapor. Have you ever lain awake at night worrying about your income, your job, your next paycheck, or your next meal? If you have, then you know just what Solomon is talking about. But as Solomon says, it doesn't have to be that way. It may have taken Solomon years of sleepless nights to finally learn the secret, but it doesn't have to take us any time at all if we'll just listen to God's word, which tells us that God came to offer us and to give us complete and total peace of mind, peace of soul, even about finances. Jesus said, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and to drink and to find joy in his work. This too, I saw, is from God's hand. For who can eat or enjoy himself apart from him? 
Yes, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness to the man whom he considers good. But to the person who goes on sinning, God gives the task of gathering and collecting, but only so that he can give all to a person whom God considers good. God gave wisdom, knowledge, and joy to Solomon when he considered him good. All right, so what is it that can bring God to consider someone good? Well, only one thing. Because we do things every day that make us very bad in God's eyes. And we constantly fail to do things that God tells us to do. Good things that he expects of us. All of us human beings are considered bad in God's eyes. But through faith in Jesus Christ, God considers us good. Jesus actually was good. He was perfect. The only one ever. He did absolutely everything right. He never sinned. And through faith in him, God credits his righteousness to us and considers us good. Absolutely incredible. Jesus shed his blood to fill a bath that washes away all our sins. And as long as we remain in our baptismal grace through faith, then God considers us good. God considers you good through faith. And so God will also watch over and protect and take care of you. And you can rest at night in complete peace. You have God's word on it. Solomon, though, in his life, did not continue in God's grace. He turned away from God in his middle years. And then this other verse he wrote was proved true in his own life. But to the person who goes on sinning, God gives the task of gathering and collecting, but only so that he can give it all to a person whom God considers good. First Kings reports that God became angry with Solomon because of his idolatrous worship. And God said this, Since this has been your practice, and since you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you. And God did. Well, not too many of us have kingdoms that God can tear away from us. But God does graciously bring trouble into many people's lives in order that, like Solomon, they may be kept from falling away or maybe caused to come back and repent after they have fallen away. God is merciful that way. He wants us in heaven through repentance and faith. And so when we stray, God brings difficulties into our lives. But certainly don't draw the wrong conclusion that all hardships come because someone has fallen away or even is falling away. No, God graciously brings hardships also into the lives of strong and sincere believers' lives to make sure that they stay close to him and even draw them closer. Some of the greatest saints have the hardest lives of all. But to them and every believer, when going through suffering, God gives peace and joy so that even in the midst of it all, we can still eat, drink, and be merry, whether in sickness and in, or in health, whether in poverty or in wealth, whether in good times or in bad. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and to drink and to find joy in his work 
This too, I saw, is from God's hand. The fool lives to eat, drink, and be merry. And God says to him, thou fool. The believer lives for God. And the Lord says to him, eat, drink, and be merry. Because God considers the believer good. How amazing. Through faith in Jesus, may God always consider you good. And through God's verdict of forgiven, not guilty, may you always enjoy God's good gifts and perfect gifts in this life and the next. Amen.